Well, happy 4th of July. This will certainly be a bit of a different one this year, won't it? Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Saturday, July 4th, 2020. In this installation of my personal canon of really important scripture passages that help interpret the rest of scripture, we'll continue our look at the law. Yesterday, we talked briefly about the Ten Commandments. Today, we'll talk about the summary of the law that Jesus gave us and how we apply the law today. In all three synoptic gospels, that is, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the writers recall an episode in which someone, either a lawyer or a scribe, asks Jesus what the greatest commandment is. As you may or may not know, Jesus quotes two passages from the Old Testament, one that is very familiar and one that is more obscure. But in lifting up these two commandments, he gives us a theological framework for understanding the law, the whole law. Listen for what Jesus has to say here. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The first commandment is from Deuteronomy 6, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. The second comes from Leviticus 19, a more obscure passage which says, You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor or you shall incur, incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. All right, we know where this summary comes from, but what place does Old Testament law have in our lives? After all, the Apostle Paul consistently warns us against trying to earn our salvation by following the law. So what good is the law? Or as Paul asks, what then should we say? That the law is sin? But then he says, by no means. If it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. What Paul says here in brief, both Martin Luther and John Calvin unpack later on. Luther believed the law had two primary uses. The first was to restrain evil. The second was to convict us of our sin that is, to show us what the good is so that we can see clearly how far short we fall in keeping God's will for us. To this, John Calvin added a third use, which we Reformed Christians believe wholeheartedly, and that is, the law becomes our teacher. It points us in the direction of righteousness and sets us on the right path. While we'll never never perfectly fulfill the law, and we aren't made righteous by following it, nevertheless, in allowing it to guide us, God uses it to strengthen us in our faith. All of this is to say, a lot of what we'll see in the New Testament depends on understanding the law. Without it, our faith would be just a matter of doing whatever we think is right. Now, before I sign off, I'll be on vacation next week, so I'll be posting a few of my devotionals from the last three months or so. It's time for a few reruns, isn't it? Now, have a safe Fourth of July holiday, and I'll see you soon. Now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.